After Victoria got diagnosed, she had a speech therapy and occupational therapy. I heard about ABA therapy at that time, but then in 2011, ABA therapy was not popular in the U.S. and it was hard to have the service because it was hard to find a clinic and therapist and expert. Also, ABA therapy was not covered by the health insurance. I had to pay out of my pocket if I wanted. But fortunately, around 2015, ABA therapy was getting popular and many clinics started providing ABA therapy and it was covered by some health patients. Not all of them though. So Victoria started speech and OT as soon as she got diagnosed when she was three years old. And she started ABA when she was seven years old. So she had had speech, OT and ABA until she was 12 years old. Speech and OT and ABA are the most popular therapy for kids with autism in the U.S. Even though Victoria had all the three therapies, in the meantime, whenever I heard about any therapist which might work for autism kids, I always tried to have it without hesitation. For example, we tried neurofeedback therapy and bridging therapy, but none of them worked for my daughter. Victoria refused a therapy. She had never done that before. So I figured out later why she didn't want to have ABA. After the Dr. Tomato's treatment, she was getting smarter. And during the ABA, they made her repeat over and over. That is ABA methodology, as everybody knows. Even though she knew something, because she couldn't express what she knew, they thought, Oh, she didn't know it. And they made her do it over and over. And that made her frustrated. And she seemed, why I have to do this? Even though I know I don't like it or it is too easy for me. That was why she didn't want to have the therapy. Because of that, she showed very bad behaviors only at the ABA clinic, such as she hit her head and arms on the wall or on the desk. So I figured out she didn't want to go to the clinic. So we stopped the ABA therapy one and a half years ago. Since then, Victoria has had only speech therapy and occupational therapy. About her diet, since she got diagnosed, she has had gluten-free and casein-free diet. And after we started the Dr. Tomato's treatment, she has had carb-free and sugar-free diets as well as gluten-free and casein-free. The strict diet definitely worked very well. And as Dr. Kim always said, a strict diet is an essential requirement for his treatment. Before Victoria started the Dr. Tomato's treatment, she had so many problems. I don't want to even think about it. Her biggest challenge was the language and communication skill. At that time, she could request verbally some food or a toy, and she could answer yes or no. She was able to repeat after me, but mostly she communicated through her AAC device, like touch chat. If she wants to read the book, book and then she can just click the picture and then, you know, the machine said, I, I want to read a book. And she just clicked the picture, what she wants. This one was her old communication method. She used to communicate through her AAC device. When I asked her some simple question, she could answer with one or two words, but she couldn't ask me WH question or she couldn't initiate a conversation on her own. If I ask her, she answered, that's all. If I don't ask her anything, she never asked me anything. She just requested what she needs. At that time, she had a severe expressive language impairment. Her receptive language was much better than expressive language. Also, she had a severe sensory processing disorder. 
she was always seeking sensor input and she had a lot of behavior problems related to the sensor issues, such as she was very distracted, hard to focus or jumping, fully escape, lying down on the floor. When she was very frustrated or angry, she stripped head to toe. It was her serious behavior problem. About her academic performance at school, two years ago, before we started Dr. Tomato's treatment, her reading and math were totally at the bottom level. She was 12 years old at the time, but for math, she was learning one digit addition and one to 20 counting. And for literacy, she could not read on her own. And so she learned just the CVC word and phonics. She could barely write her name and answer her personal information, like her name, phone number, age, address because she could not express her feelings and her thought, nobody could know about her potentiality or ability. She just requested some food or toy. She didn't care about what was going on around her. When I explained something to her, she looked like she couldn't understand. Also, because of her poor academic performance, I thought she had very severe mental retardation or intellectual ability. It was hard for her to have an interaction with the people. She didn't play with the friends. She used to avoid the kids around her. Before we started the treatment, as I already said, Victoria used to have a very serious behavior problem. One of them was her violent behavior. And actually, because of her aggression, we started the Dr. Tomeso treatment. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. After she turned 11, suddenly she became very aggressive and violent. For example, every morning, as soon as she got up, she started screaming and crying and she scratched me and pinched me and sometimes she beat me. She did it every single morning for longer than one year. Every day was a nightmare at that time. Also, she was aggressive at school and in the clinics. She pinched, beat everybody around her, like teachers, therapists, kids, whoever. So her AB therapist wanted me to take her to a psychiatrist. Also, I heard from many people, such as a therapist or some parents who had autism kids that many autistic kids struggle with their puberty and they show many negative behaviors during puberty. So many people start using medication after their autistic kid turn into teenager. So I took Victoria to a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and the doctor prescribed Zoloft which was a pill for depression. However, Victoria was allergic to the Zoloft and I had to stop using it. Then I was looking for another method because I didn't want to use the chemical medicine for my daughter. One day when I watched YouTube, I saw Dr. Kim's YouTube videos by accident and I watched a lot of his lectures. In fact, I was very surprised when I watched his lectures because on the video, he answered all the questions nobody was able to answer in the past, such as, what is the cause of autism? Is autism curable or incurable? What can we do for our autistic kid? Why am I kid acting like that? When they would be better or when they can be changed, something like this. I had been asking those questions to many doctors and experts, but whenever I asked them, they said, oh, nobody knows the cause of autism. Oh no, autism is not curable. Victoria has to live with her disability forever. She's able to learn life skills and communication skills, but her autism will not go away. It will be with her forever. And she had to live with her disability. 
nothing would change it. These are the answers I got from doctors and experts. However, Dr. Kim said, autism is a curable disease, not incurable disability. I got shocked with that statement because it was totally against the established theory in modern medicine. But it was good news for myself and I wanted to believe him. Finally, I could have hope before I watched his video. I could not have hope because everybody said, oh, Victoria has to live with her autism disability forever. Nothing will be changed. But Dr. Kim was different. So I started the Dr. Tomatoes treatment right away. And my hope and dream came true. We started the treatment two years ago and Victoria is still being treated by Dr. Kim.